Hello and welcome to News Click. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta and we're going to discuss what is nothing short of a scandal pertaining to a company called GIFT. GIFT is an acronym for Gujarat International Finance Tech City. It's setting up a major project in Gandhinagar in Gujarat and it's got embroiled in a scandal because it's affiliated closely to the scam-tainted ILNFS, that is the Infrastructure Leasing and Financial Services Group. I have with me here in the studio a person who blew the whistle on the scandal concerning Gift City. Let me welcome Sri Divya Bhash Chandrakant Anjariya. Mr. D.C. Anjaria was the first independent director of Gift Company and headed its audit committee. He's a finance professional who worked for 20 years with Citibank in four different countries and is currently also a trustee of the Consumer Education and Research Society of Ahmedabad, which uh, runs the Consumer Education and Research Center. Thank you so much, Mr. Anjaria, for coming here. The gift project was touted as a showcase project by the Gujarat government and that time it was headed by Mr. Narendra Modi, he was the chief minister then. And a project which was supposed to cost 25,000 crore in 2008, 10 years ago, today the price has gone up, well, almost three times to 70,000 crore. Is this part of the scandal? Uh, I would say yes by hindsight because this threefold, fourfold increase was not necessarily due to inflation or prices. It is simply by taking over more and more land. What started off with uh, a project that would have needed, let's say, 250 acres for a special economic zone, uh, Island FS interest was in getting more and more land until they got to almost 900 acres of land instead of 250. And, and these uh, more than 800 acres of land, according to you, was virtually gifted by the government of Gujarat. Absolutely. Be because they got it, uh, the company got it for a ridiculously low price of one rupee per acre on a 99 year lease. And it has been calculated that if indeed that land who was sold at or, or leased at market prices, the price would have been uh, 440 crores or thereabouts. More, more. Even more. 880 acres when it started uh, would be at least 880 crores. And uh, today it is, uh, let's say, in excess of 2,500 crores. And, and, and they've got it for next to nothing. Actually nothing, because there's no rent, there's nothing, mm -hmm. except the later on, in fact, it was my advice, uh, which was adopted, which was later on to say that, look, you have not only the land, but you have right to sell it at commercial prices. Therefore, the profit you make should be shared back with the government. And however, you take as your incentive, let's say 20%, share back, you know, give back, 80%. Even that has not been done. Mr. Anjaria, this project, which is being established by Gift Company, is a 50-50 joint venture between the government of Gujarat and IL and FS. And it seems and that this project was subsequently given on a contract, on agreement, by another entity, which is called Fairwood Holdings. And the manner in which Fairwood Holdings was given a contract to develop this project didn't follow the due process. And according to you, it didn't follow the guidelines uh, and, and the rules which were laid down under the Gujarat Infrastructure Development Act of 1999. And one of the irregular irregularities was it seems and that this contract went to this consortium headed by Fairwood Holdings even before the project had taken off. 
How, how, how was this done? That's correct. So um, there was an MOU. First of all, uh, I was involved in pointing the finger to likely participants in the development of this project to the state. Uh, and that this For example, IDFC, Infrastructure Development Company, uh, headed by Rajiv Lal. Yes. And Infrastructure of course, Development. Parek. Yes. Uh, another name was Kotak because they had just set up a big real estate fund and were, would have supported this. Third was uh, an international architectural firm based in New York who have experience in global city development. Uh, after all this, for various reasons, ILNFS was chosen by the government. At that point, I was not part of the government or there was no you were, formal were, improvement. Were you in the indep an independent director at that time? No, because the company didn't exist. I see. So government chose its joint venture partner independently, except I pointed fingers to all these uh, possible uh, joint venture partners as a sort of a friend of the Gujarat government. I, I had no formal role or capacity. Uh, and uh, they decided to go with Island FS. Now, this company, Fairwood Holdings, which led that consortium, operated out of an office of an IEL and FS associate, if not a subsidiary, which is the Delhi Noida Toll Company. And according to you, it got essentially what is called a sweetheart deal, uh, which some would call a gold-plated management contract. It got a consultancy fee of 20 lakh rupees a month, excluding taxes and out-of-pocket expenses. One of the clauses in the contract said that the advances once paid could not be recovered even if the services were not provided. And according to you, this company, Fairwood Holdings, got in excess of 400 crore rupees in fees during the two-year period it was on this project. And thereafter, after around two years, its contract was terminated because it failed to deliver. Am I correct? Yeah. Few corrections. Essentially, you're correct, but few corrections. Um, the contract to Fairwood was not terminated until I left and it was done probably in 2014, which means a good seven years mm -hmm. after that. And even after that, it has uh, been subject to an arbitration, which is not going anywhere in terms of decision. F five years already and no decision. Uh, Fairwood, now how, how much Fairwood is... was, however, what was uh, wrong was its selection. I see because they had no track record in putting up a global kind of city, the vision that was... A project of this kind. Correct. And, and what I found out later on, after we came into contact, was that all they had was a small office given by ILNFS to them in the Noida, Delhi... Delhi uh, Noida Toll Company. Toll, and that toll gate. That's correct. All they had was a few thousand square feet and uh, no real experts on their uh, board mm -hmm. and um, uh, you know but uh, you tell me how much is according to you owed by this fairwood holdings to gift how much was owed hmm? uh, how much is owed you know this arbitration as it's been going on as you say uh, my my information says it's been going on for almost four years yes and now uh, four years plus Okay, Almost sure. close to five years. And there have been 25 hearings that have taken place in this period of time. But it's the, the, the dispute hasn't been resolved. So, so what exactly is the dispute? The, this company is claiming how much from Fairwood? Okay. So uh, the genesis of this is that uh, Fairwood 1 was selected as head of a consortium with the Chinese architectural firm called Ekadi. Uh, the contract to them was given by ILNFS directly for working on the land of uh, Gujarat government based on only a memorandum of understanding which was signed 
with the state in February or so 2007. So even ILNFS didn't have the contract yet, yet they went ahead and gave the contract to Fairwood. So that's, that's where it all sort of starts. How much is owed? Right. I, mean, I mean, Fairwood right. Holdings, what is being claimed by gift, by way of dues or damages or whatever you want to, yes. whichever way you want to classify yes. it. So at the very least, they were promised, uh, you know, fees uh, of different slabs, but almost close to 2% of the value of the contract. Now this is a, an area where a lot of games were played. It started with a small area to be developed, then, uh, you know, 880 acres. Yeah, from, from 25,000 crore to 70,000 crore. And, and, and if it's 1% of 70,000 crore is 700 crores. But they were promised close to 2%. 2% so is 1,400 crores. 1,400 crores was promised. Of which, in my experience, uh, while I was on board, close to 400 crores has been paid to them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so, so much of it as advance. And the real... Uh, story came out uh, when I alleged all these irregularities, when they did not perform, etc., that they claimed that the advances once paid to them were not recoverable. I mean, this is an and amazing... That's a clear window. This is truly amazing uh, that in a contract you should have such a glaring loophole. And that too from a so-called infrastructure development uh, expert company like ILNFS. ILNFS. So the expertise was in how, terms what kind of, of, of how to draw it out. What kind of expertise is another story with today it's being compared no. to uh, uh, Lehman Brothers and, and with a huge debt and, 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 and the whole um, uh, scandal around uh, the inability of the ILNFS group to repay its dues. But be that as it may, you have alleged in your public interest litigation that minutes of board meetings were not properly maintained. Uh, so what were the circumstances under which you left the company and the head of its uh, uh, audit committee? Right. So um, I, I joined from day one, uh, uh, 2007, uh, and uh, exactly five years later, uh, I, uh, my directorship was not renewed. The last six months were, uh, of course, uh, um, very special in that they were already upset. They wanted me to be removed in 2011 year end. Uh, I lasted another six months because at that time, Narendra Modi led uh, Gujarat government supported me and said, you can't remove him like that. In any case, there's a legal process for the removal of a director. And the reason it happened was a crucial uh, audit committee meeting where from seven to 11, uh, based on four years experience with Fairwood and in line with the normal duty of an audit committee, I brought in a resolution which was passed with the government uh, support that they have not performed money paid to them should be recovered. It's as simple as that. This non-performance has been recorded in the minutes records, the and minutes so on of, the meeting. of, and this decision, these recommendations of the audit committee were, are also recorded. And uh, what they did, what they wanted to do, the chairman and the other directors, and notably Island FS as the manager of the project was to remove me and then redo all the minutes and everything so that the Tell irregularity, that what, did not happen. All right. What made you move a public interest litigation against the company in the Gujarat High Court in 2015? What prompted you? And also please tell us what is the current status of that Case. So uh, this has been sort of the last uh, measure that I could take. But before that, a lot of things happened. I uh, s believed that I was uh, an advisor, so to say, uh, to the government because I had recommended the whole project, structured the whole project, and was kept on the board 
as an expert on this while they focused on infrastructure development and so on. Uh, the financial sector development uh, was uh, to be my area of contribution. However, I was also taken as audit committee chairman because I was the only independent director and company. And you had a background in finance and you were a finance and, professional. And I, I, I'm, I'm also on and the and audit committee chair. Uh, of other Gujarat government companies I like see. GSFC and, and and you have a background you studied at the Indian Institute of Management Ahmedabad Ahmedabad before that also commerce audit education etc so that's fine but that turned out to be the problem because as audit committee chief I saw most of the irregularities and the money going away and non-performance and that's what okay. it pointed out so that's what prompted you to move court so first I kept all these questions before the audit committee and made all these observations internally. Not much happened, so I interacted with the chairman and saying, this is all wrong, it, it should not do. Issues were corporate governance, fair word contract, and other irregularities like award of contracts to subsidiaries of ILNFS mm. without any bidding process or anything. Irregular, completely. Completely. And non-transparent too. Non-transparent. Considering that it's a public, I mean it's a joint venture. Exactly. It's a public-private partnership. Half, exactly. half of the, 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 the project is being funded by the state government. Exactly. Now in response, the management, and unfortunately blessed by the chairman appointed by the government, uh, kept coming up with some deceptive kind of... Are you uh, talking about the present managing director and chief executive officer, Mr. Ajay Pandey? Uh, before him was uh, uh, one Mr. Pa uh, Ramakant Jha. Ramakant Jha. Uh, and uh, before him was uh, an ILNFS employee. He was relatively junior. He lasted for some initial two years and then... And on the board were eminent persons, including two professors at the Indian Institute of Management. Damn it, the no, now this, all this happened only after I left. I see. Uh, I was kept as the only independent director. Uh, four directors from government, four from ILNFS. So only independent director. So uh, obviously the voice was not as uh, influential well, as did. it could have been if, like today. All these people were brought in when I made all those observations and said that Fairwood has not performed and the money all paid right. to them has you, to be you, recorded. You have already said that. I'm just cutting you here just to say, so you, correct me if I'm wrong, you felt frustrated and you moved the High Court. Correct. So, and you so moved what you say is a public interest litigation. Input because to public the chairman didn't involved. get action, input to the whole board right. didn't get okay. action. And okay, so it's, it's been like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, it's been some time now, it's, it's been a more than three years now, I, I think almost four years now since you moved court. What is the current status of this case? The next hearing is uh, 20, uh, uh, 28th of November now, All right. coming up. Um, however, so far, there was only one hearing where the notice was allowed to be issued only to the company itself, but neither to the chairman as we have required, nor to LNFS as we have required. Okay. So we'll have to wait till the 28th, uh, Wednesday, the 28th of November, to find out how the Gujarat High Court uh, acts on this matter. Uh, my last question to you is, after Sucheta Dalal in Money Life wrote an article about this scandal, the gift city scandal, so to say, something very unusual happened. Uh, Mr. Ajay Pandey, the managing director and chief executive officer of Gift City, uh, he inserted what we in our media parlance call an advertorial uh, in a newspaper, the Business Standard. This was on the 13th of August, through a third party. Interestingly, and the third party was Scotch Development Foundation, where you, these are the, the, the allegations that Sucheta had made in her article were sought to be um, sort of answered, except that 
according to her, the second article that she wrote after this appeared, that they got some of their facts wrong, including uh, that this case had been filed against uh, the Gujarat government, whereas it was only against the company. And uh, there, according to her, this advertorial could be construed as defamatory. Would you like to comment on what she's said? Yes, in fact, uh, I've got here. legal advice also that this is defamatory because it is based on incorrect facts. Everything that uh, they alleged, for example, that I was part of the uh, contract given, uh, that decision to award the contract to Fairwood. That you were supposed to be a part of that. But I was never you, not you never had. I was neither in the government nor yet the company was not formed. They they gave the contract. So the current chief sec, the then chief secretary, current chairman, was the one who authorized it, and they are trying to pass on the blame to me when I was not even associated with the project. Company didn't exist. Nothing. I only started questioning it once I joined the board of the new company, and uh, they. For four years, they tried all kinds of techniques to convince me that this was OK. Uh, they talked about it as a consortium, and it wasn't. The Chinese never really signed the agreement. Their name was being used. Uh, then uh, to get out of this, uh, all kinds of innovative solutions like saying that, OK, if Fairwood tells us that this is a consortium, it is a consortium. OK. That sort of thing. My, my absolutely last, last question to you. Only time will tell how the court uh, adjudicates this matter. Yes. But the critics of the Gujarat government and the critics of Prime Minister Narendra Modi claim that what has happened in Gift City is kind of an example or symptomatic of the so-called Gujarat model of development, where public monies is expended for private, uh, for private profit. Uh, for private profit. Would you uh, go along with this? Uh, I have a very uh, mixed uh, response, maybe partly disappointing. Narendra Modi made some key decisions right in the early stages of this game, which were actually correct. Uh, for example, in this project, in mean? this project, for example, I had put this project up, uh, the report that I wrote to the Gujarat government, which was accepted as my recommendation, was one that financial center has to be developed. Because it, it, there was a rivalry of having that financial center either in Gandhinagar or in Mumbai. And, and many believe it should have been in Mumbai. After all, Mumbai well, is the in fact, finance uh, I tried capital. to have it in Mumbai, but I got nowhere with Maharashtra government. Then I gave this input to the committee uh, that was formed by Mr. Chidambaram, headed by the ex-World Bank uh, chief, Mr. Mystery. And uh, I said that, you know, we should take this opportunity. It was, the, it, it was set up to make Mumbai an IFC. So I said, if you want to do that, you should follow. A when you say IFC, you mean the International, international Financial Center. Center. If you want to make Mumbai an IFC, you can do it through a special economic zone law, which allows for creation of such a center. But they rejected that proposal. Instead, it went to Gujarat. Then I went to Gujarat and approached Narendra Modi, and he said, yes, we but then want what to. happened after that? After that, the, the, um, uh, he asked me to write a detailed report for an entity called Gujarat State Financial, uh, Gujarat State Financial Corporation. Uh, headed by Smukharia, who later on became, became the, the finance secretary, finance secretary. Dr. And, uh, the report I gave said three things. One is that we need uh, an international financial, India needs a financial center because it is now a freer, more globalized economy. Secondly, that it can come up only on the basis of world-class infrastructure, because if you want financial professionals to come and work there, you need to provide that, like Singapore or whatever. And the third part was the use of technology to okay. support this. Is, is Mr. Modi aware of all these scandals that have happened? Yes, not only, even at that time, and he made the right decision. But then why hasn't he done anything to rectify the situation? That's where the uh, problem starts. So at that time, he said, look, fine, if you need land, we will give you land, you develop it, that, but that's a separate project. 
as a public private partnership government is not an expert in this okay. that will be so correct decision but people who were interested in this project was not for financial sector development because money was in the infrastructure development so would i be correct in saying that despite being aware of the scandal prime minister narendra modi has apparently done little or nothing to rectify matters in essence yes all right i have to conclude the conversation now mr anjaria thank you very much for giving us your time and for explaining this rather complex issue in simple language and let's wait and watch what happens and how the court rules you just heard and watched dc anjaria he is the former independent director of gift company gift is an acronym for gujarat international finance tech city which is a showcase project of the gujarat government and he's made a startling disclosure saying prime minister narendra modi is aware of certain scandalous developments concerning the implementation of this showcase project but done nothing to rectify or improve the situation thank you for being with us and keep watching news click